And that's why I believe in you because that is the greatest purpose. It's to love. Honest. It's to, it sounds corny. Whatever you want to say, I don't care. I love people because there is freedom and power in loving people. Hello, all you positive heads out there. Thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness, which creates and animates all things. Now, of course, understanding this powerful truth is one thing. Applying this incredibly empowering wisdom to everyday life, well, that's another, which is exactly why we provide you with a fresh serving of soul food for thought five days a week to help constantly remind you of what matters most. You are it. And I'm your host, Brandon Beecham. I'm the one who will be here with you each and every Wednesday interviewing a different consciousness change maker that is also out there working tirelessly to help catalyze change and expand awareness all across Spaceship Earth. On the other four weekdays, you can hear me discussing topics such as my favorite thought-provoking quotes, reading and discussing wisdom from empowering books, playing clips from various inspirational spiritual teachers, sharing a bit of mysterious news, taking questions from the audience, and essentially digging into any other mind-expansive topics that will help keep your soul fed by tuning you into positive vibrations on a consistent basis. And you guys have heard me say that if I ever run ads on the show, it will only be with a company that I fully support because I believe their intention is to make a positive difference in the world. Well, I'm pleased to announce that day has arrived and that this episode of the Positive Head podcast is being brought to you thanks to the support of Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. All right, all you positive heads. For this week's special guest, I am very excited to have a friend of mine here with me, Daniel Raphael. Daniel is a healer and wizard that is sure to make you question if Harry Potter was actually a nonfiction account of his life by the end of this episode. Hey there, Daniel. Welcome to the show, brother. Aloha. It's great to be with you. Ah, so good to have you here. We've been uh, trying to connect on this for quite some time, and here it is. And uh, I know the audience is going to absolutely love uh, hearing some of the uh, the topics of discussion we have sort of planned here. Um, but I'm going to start off with the same question I always start off with. You're in an elevator. The guy next to you looks over, says, what's your passion? You've got 10 floors to answer. What do you say? <laughs> I love that. My passion is awakening and making it fun and simple so that everyone can be free. <laughs> mm, that's, that is, that is a good answer. And, uh, that explains why we're friends and why we're connecting on this show, because what else to do, right? Once you start waking up yourself, yeah, there's a lot of growth and work to do, but it's sort of like we're, everyone is sort of a teacher and a student simultaneously, and uh, it's it's there's nothing more rewarding that I've found than touching someone's life, and I know you've done that on many occasions. I've seen you do that, and uh, it's it's powerful, right? I mean, it's the most rewarding thing there is. Oh yeah. <laughs> so so tell me a little bit. Let's give the audience some background on who the heck is this wizard, and uh, yeah, just maybe a little background on who you are. Yeah, it's a, it's it's quite a crazy story. Um, when I was when I was just a few years old, I I started uh, experiencing some supernatural abilities, and then everything shut down by the time I uh, started school, and uh, I developed half a dozen mental disorders and just totally shut down. Uh, wow. My mind stopped working in a lot of ways. My heart closed off fully where um, I didn't really even know what love was anymore. And uh, wow, I was either going to kill myself or heal myself. And I knew the second option was going to be a lot of hard work, but I decided to just trust and commit to that 
and surrender to what the universe had for me. So I traveled the world and uh, the rest is history. And uh, from just that muscle of uh, working out every day, my soul, my mind, my heart, I developed this gift that essentially uh, when I work with someone, I, I go into their body and I can see through their eyes and like a video game, I see wow. different parts of their emotions, different blocks, layers, shapes, colors, beings, and I walk them through their own video game. And it, it works really fast because maybe there's this fear that's been bugging someone. And so, you know, we try out different things and we push, maybe we have to release the shame before we can get to the root of this fear, for example. And I've mm -hmm. been solving these types of you know, video games, kind of like I'm, I've been playing this for, for years, like that's all I've been doing. Instead of going to bars or, or dating anyone, I've done this for myself. And from that, I started helping my friends and my family just because I was like, oh, I've, I've beat this level already, you know? And uh, just, just from doing that for so many years, uh, now I help people and I make it fun and exciting and, and it's like a game. So um, it's, really, it's really beautiful and, and makes the hell that I lived through absolutely worth it because that's yeah. uh, what I needed to experience to be able to really help other people and guide them out. Of, of their stuff. So, wow. Yeah. What, a, what an interesting journey. Uh, how old were you when this all started, kind of started opening up for you? Well, I was very open as a young child. And then, um, I mean, in preschool, I walked up to a stranger and I convinced her to quit smoking wow. and she started crying. And I would go up to every preschool teacher in my preschool and I could see their deepest insecurities and I would channel a compliment to like the antidote of, uh, wow. like I remember this one teacher, she hated her voice. I could just tell she was scared to talk. So I said, your voice is sweet like honey, you know? And I was like wow. four or five years old and wow. it was just really beautiful. And I had really powerful intuitive abilities and was able to channel what people were thinking. And, um, other things that I'm not going to freak people out with right now that are more hard to believe for some. And, no, uh, you won't. Hey, I'll tell you, we like the freakier, the better on this show. Oh, that, Daniel, don't right? hold back for our uh, case. <laughs> I, feel, I feel weird sharing it because it's, it's like su the superpowers. I think everyone has, and I don't want to yep. feel like I'm bragging about it, but um, it, I mean, I was able to um, burn out light bulbs with my mind. I was able wow. to, um, have pieces of paper like uh, on the wall and taped up and then have them fall down like weird things like that. And I wow. had this little bouncy ball where I would tell my, my friends, you know, I'm just going to throw it and it's going to go here, 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 here and bounce like five different walls and land right here exactly there. And it would just do that without me needing to wow. think about it. So little, little things like that, just tapping into the field and yeah. then everything started going crazy. Um, you know, from environmental issues and, uh, I developed high levels of, of toxicity and I started feeling like I was disconnected from my soul and it just got worse and worse where I be, I developed uh, depersonalization where I felt like the world wasn't real. I wasn't real. I felt like I was somewhere else and I was just observing and I would just stare at people and things a lot. And, uh, mm -hmm feel very out of control, social anxiety. I was scared to go in public. I would hear voices and severe, severe depression, bipolar. Um, I would fall asleep all the time. My, my nickname in school became the sleeper. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was pretty bad. So, um, yeah, things turned, things turned really tough. And as you said, it was just part of your journey, though. You needed to sort of go through some of that stuff so that you could, uh, I'm sure it helps you to relate when you are dealing with someone now, uh, probably, I would imagine, especially children, there's so many children out there who are being mislabeled with having issues that really pertain more to them trying to get a handle on their gifts. Would you say that's an accurate statement? Definitely. I feel like a lot of the mental disorder labels are actually 
just, uh, you know, kids, adults that are extra tapped in and intuitive. And it's just a side effect of them trying to handle their power and their emotions in a society that's extremely sick and distorted, you know, as we're living in opposite land. So for example, synchronicity and, you know, looking at the patterns, that's a sign of an increased awareness and consciousness. Yet that can be labeled as schizophrenic or paranoid. So it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate. And, uh, you know, it gives us an opportunity to really, uh, change the narrative on, what's really going on and uh, empower children and adults to embrace their shadow, embrace the different parts of them and integrate it again, because that's what's necessary to become whole and to become a sovereign human. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it seems like there's, would you say that there is more and more children coming in now with, with gifts, you know, as we, of course you hear a lot about sort of a spiritual awakening of sorts happening, would you say that that is a, an accurate statement? The kids coming in today are like next level X-Men. I mean, they're, <laughs> it's, I've never seen anything like this, you know, especially the really young, young kids. A few of my friends have uh, children that they just look at you and you're like, wow, you're going to change the world. Right. And, uh, they're raised in a conscious way because uh, it's been rare, very rare in you know past generations for that to happen. So I feel you know for the first time you know more, a new wave of children are being born with very advanced souls, and they're being raised in ways where they're not uh, intoxicated, you know, in the hospitals and and you know given all this stuff right. early on to shut them down. And so it's quite they have their, the parents that understand how to handle them essentially. Exactly, um, at least a much greater degree than in the past. Right. Right. So let's talk a little bit about wizards. Uh, This is a term that you identify with that I absolutely love. I mean, literally above my head as we talk is my uh, wizard staff that I made many years ago with an amethyst crystal that lights up that I carry around at festivals. And, um, you know, uh, tell me a little bit about that term and, and why you identify with it. Yeah. Well, at first I didn't really want to identify with it, but everyone, you know, a lot of my friends just referred to me as the wizard. And then, yeah. um, I'm friends with, uh, my friend Travis Brewer. He's a finalist on the American Ninja Warrior TV show. He identifies uh-huh. as the ninja and everyone calls him the ninja. And when we first yeah. started hanging out, he was like, you're a wizard, just own it. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's like, you know, we all have those archetypes, you know, and, and it, I'm just, I feel like it's a never ending process, you know, of, yeah. of, of the wizard. And it's, uh, it's in all of us because wizard creates his or her own reality through magic. And magic is simply affecting change in the world through your willpower. And so right. I like to demystify it a bit and just empower people to use their magic because we're manifesting, we're using our magic at every moment. Most people just don't yeah. know it. So it's not like, right. How do you manifest right. something? It's like we're always manifesting. And because yep. there's a lot of distortions. Consciously or unconsciously, it's sort of exactly. your choice, right? Exactly, yeah. And so just switching it to to conscious, you know, a simple tool is to remember how to spell and make a spell. And it's from spelling. So right. abracadabra is literally, with my word, I create. That's what it means. Yep. So wizards, you know, thousands of years ago, they carried pendants that said that to remind themselves at all times that every word they say is both in their thoughts and and with their voice is creating reality. And remembering that we have the ability to really code and program our reality more and more consciously and not be reactive to programs in us that are coding it for us. Right, right, right. Yeah, I really... uh resonate and like i love of course i've always been the biggest nerd for like lord of the rings are my favorite movies of all time and (laughs) anything like that as a kid i would read as much as stuff uh, you know sort of the science uh you have science fan fiction science fantasy Uh, the fantasy stuff really resonated with me reading about wizards and that sort of thing and my brother's always made fun of me Uh, you've always you're not a wizard brandon you know like jokingly like uh, since i was a kid so i really resonate with this have you heard it referred to as 
I really like the, the term sorcerer. You're channeling source energy, right? So it's that one really is cool with the sort of the, the double interpretation. Yeah, it's from the root word source, you know, and, and a lot of these right. words are also tainted and, you know, with, with fear and different things. And it's, right. um, you can, you can use magic for the light, for the target, for, um, or just be 5d and, and not have, not, not be polarized in that. Um, but at the end of the day right. that I, I feel like magic is just an offshoot of your, of your consciousness. And, and the more you focus on just doing your own work and clearing the childhood imprints that are not you, the more right. your abilities really come in and, and aligned with what you really want. And so um, besides doing a pineal gland detox, which can involve different herbs, plant medicines, or taking a borax bath, which is really powerful, um, mm. which removes the fluoride from your pineal gland. Um, just the, the more you work on your ego and quiet your mind, the more you'll be able to hear other people's thoughts and, for example, differentiate between their thoughts and your thoughts, tune into their energy and what they're feeling, which is clairsentience, and mm. also see more of their energy because you're opening more and more to your inner sight. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, a borax bath, uh, which I, I've heard about, haven't done. Uh, that's something that you, you highly recommend. Um, and you said also uh, a cleanse with different herbs. Do you want to, is there some sort of a little bit more uh, guidance sure. you can give people who want to go down this road? Yeah, I've 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 tried a lot of different protocols. Um, some some recommend skate liver oil, for example, which is a special fat from a fish that is said to decalcify it, and tamarind, and herbs, simple things like cacao. But what really worked for me um, were a couple different supplements. One is borax decahydrate. It's you want to you don't want to buy it at the store. You want to buy the, a special pure form online. And some people even take it internally. It's a natural seabed mineral just because it's used for washing clothes and sometimes have other chemicals added to it. Uh, it doesn't mean that the natural form isn't safe. It's actually, um, you can you can Google it online and uh, Google the Borax Conspiracy. It's a great, great article on it. Uh, mm -hmm. People have been using it for hundreds of years um, for a lot of other stuff too. It really, it decalcifies your whole body, not just your pineal gland. So wow. it really helps with arthritis and things like that. Um, but you can, you can put half a cup in a bath, go in it for 40 minutes. It's pulling out, it's a halogen like fluoride. So it's pulling out, um, so much fluoride. It's extremely powerful. The other thing that helped me tremendously was Iboga. It's a plant from Africa that mm. is really powerful in detoxing your whole body, resetting, resurfacing every cellular receptor site in your whole body. It's a, it's a system reset and it, it opens up your visual clear audio, clear audience, clear sentience. It just really unlocks your abilities. That's, that's a real commitment. That's like ayahuasca, you know, uh, and then some, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you do, if you do a full dose, which I only recommend doing at a center with a guide that knows what they're doing, which is pretty rare nowadays right um yep you know it can last two to three days it can be brutal if you're toxic you could throw up a lot or it can just be absolutely blissful like my times um that i've that i've experienced it um but you can also microdose with it which means taking just a small amount like a pinch of salt every day and mm -hmm. it's just slowly working and on opening and detoxifying you in a safe manner um, which you can do in a country where it is legal in like Canada, Mexico, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you guys can go back and check out, uh, uh an interview, you know, many months back, uh, with, uh, Martin Polanco, uh, and a couple others, uh, they have crossroads. I think you're familiar with crossroads down in Mexico where that's exactly mm -hmm. what they do. Yes. Speaking of your journey uh, on Iboga, I actually caught, uh, soon after we met a few years ago, I caught a uh, talk that you gave at Lightning in a Bottle about it, and it was uh, it was really fascinating to sort of hear your, your account. Of course, you know, 
Iboga is a whole next level in itself, but then you take someone like you who is so sensitive and sort of uh, Harry Potter-esque, <laughs> I'd love for you to give a, share a little bit of that story with the listeners. Um, it, was, it was really cool. Sure. Well, um, essentially, I had tried everything from 10-day meditation retreats to flying to India to every supplement to, you know, and things helped, but it was not chipping away at the monster that was inside of my mind that was, that hated myself, that hated the world, that was just so depressed from all the trauma, abuse, and bullying, et cetera, Mm -hmm. that I had my whole life. So I wasn't making enough progress. And I decided to you know, it's like, I'm, I looked it up online. I'm like, okay, we're going to try this one last thing. It sounds really scary. And, uh, this doesn't work. That's pretty much it. You know, last, last try. <laughs> so, wow. um, I went down to central America and, uh, actually did it with an Iboga shaman. And within the first 30 minutes I was in the spirit world and I didn't throw up like a lot of people do or have any difficulties. It just, boom. And I, Mm -hmm. in the first journey, it showed me, um, it was like a school and on the board was, you know, my thoughts with trails like running by me. And then there were little Pac-Man looking viruses that were biting the end of the tails of the thoughts and not allowing them to manifest or really sink in. It's like, I want to paint a picture. And then the virus said, you're not good enough to paint a picture. So, um, it showed me the difference between my willpower and the virus and to disidentify with that virus and gave me a, a visualization to do. So it was already showing me, you know, the start of this this video game and how to just go to the next level. And so um, it went into my language and showed me how important my language was and told me I was speaking the language of slaves and enslaving myself wow. with my language, with all these words we use, you know, like should or try which are, right. you know, connoting um, power outside of yourself or that you're going to fail. So um, one that I've really caught on to lately is, you know, a lot of times people say, oh, that's sick. Uh, you know, and I'm like, no, that's healthy. <laughs> I do that all the time. I mean, we're, we're living in uh, an engineered language culture where, where things are said like, that's wicked. <laughs> that's right. right. That's sick. You know, right. oh, we have a deadline. Oh, let's killer, get killer, killer. <laughs> so the eighties is particularly bad. <laughs> death, which, um, you know, our subconscious mind works differently than than our conscious mind. And if you say that's sick, and you you think it's something good, then you're telling your subconscious sick equals good, and you're more right. likely to get sick. And just it, it's just distortions of reality. So yeah, yeah. It, it showed me that and a lot of other words. You know, the 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 shaman also said we don't have the word hope in our tribe because you don't need to hope for something; you just make it happen. <laughs> yeah. So the shortcut is, is, is to be like your, right. What's that? I said the shortcut is to just be it, right? Just exactly. going from trying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely a lesson that I've had to learn. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just releasing all those distortions and went to my family and, you know, it showed me how my parents would die and told me, you know, oh, it's wow. time to forgive them, you know, and it was really intense, you know, but it's what I needed wow. to to see. And then, you know, after the, the basics were done, um, I was getting, you know, because you can also direct it. And I said, I want to open up my third eye. And I didn't even know what that really meant. And then mm-hmm. I heard... and. It, it, and this voice is talking to you, the voice of truth the whole time. And I, and, and the voice said, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah. So I said, okay, go to your, go to the center of your head. And so I just went inside my body and I saw this gate that was blocked and closed off. Wow. And I said, why is it closed off? And it started sharing hundreds of, I saw like hundreds of sentences, thoughts, like spells that were keeping me asleep and not wanting me to wake up. And it also showed me this crust of chemicals that was was in that area. So I just meditated on it for really intensely. I, I even got angry and just like, and then finally I just yeah. said, fuck all that. <laughs> and then the gate opened. 
<laughs> wow. And, uh, actually, you know, anger is actually not a bad thing. There's actually no good, good or bad, right or wrong. And a uh, right. few times in my life, having to really tap into my anger gave me the energy to move up to a higher vibrational level. So anyways, I got really angry and then the, the gate opened and then I saw a giant white star at the center of my head. And I said, what's that? And the voice said, just go inside, just go, in, go mm-hmm. into the star. And I was mm-hmm. for some reason terrified. Like I didn't know what was going to happen, but I knew if I did that, the, my entire reality would forever be dramatically changed. And it was like jumping off a cliff and just trusting. And, and finally, I just forced myself and I just, just went into that area. And then instantly, <clears throat> part of my soul that I didn't even know was missing, or my consciousness, just <clears throat> came from the top of my head and into the center. And mm-hmm. it's like I just woke up from a bad dream. Because everything felt wow. like a video game until that moment in my life. And yeah. I got used to it. And then <clears throat> I just like... I felt real again. I'm like, what's going on? I, I was like, am I enlightened? I thought, I thought it was like fully enlightened, yeah. you know, just the start. But yeah. at that moment it was so extreme. And yeah. then the, the voice said, congratulations. You've just made the first free choice of your life. Wow. <laughs> and I, <what laughs> how powerful. About? I made millions of free choices and it just showed me how everything was just, a reaction, you know, even me wanting to heal myself, I was sick. So naturally I was reacting to Mm. the story and the lineage and everything that I got programmed with until I finally just decided to to just come back. Boom. (laughs) So that was just the beginning of many journeys that I did with Iboga, um, which absolutely transformed me. The issue was that it opened up my mind my psychic abilities to a very deep degree, yet my heart was still closed. I was a good person. I was nice, but I was not really letting people in. And so yeah. after working a lot with it, I decided to go back home to America. And that's when I opened up to my first real friend. And it was a scary process because I always had quote unquote friends, but you know, I was very closed off. I was very superficial. I would, you know, exaggerate things. My ego was out of control because I was just so insecure and I thought everyone hated me. I literally was convinced for years that everybody hated me. Wow. And so I, I stopped feeling love completely. And I just wanted to make people laugh to maybe get a little bit of attention to feel yeah. better because that's what I thought it was all about. And so I yeah. came back and from all the stuff, you know, the work I did. I realized, okay, it's time to be transparent. And I started sharing things with my first, you know, real friend that I haven't shared with anyone. And and we just became closer and closer from that. I was scared, you know, I would get rejected, but it actually just brought us closer. And then finally I broke down crying one day and I shared that every time I get a hug from him or someone, I close off and I can't feel the hug. I can't feel love. And I literally, uh, we, we, we had to practice and I freaked out and it, and it took a long time just to be able to let him and other people in to feel a hug, to feel yeah. love. And then from that, I became, I started feeling love just the very beginning of it, but I didn't know at the time it was still highly distorted and I became codependent and just wanted hugs all the time from people because I, I felt like I was just a little baby and I didn't yeah. know how to really give myself love. And so that caused a lot of issues and, and, and other, you know, deep emotions that were extremely challenging came up. So it was really, uh, challenging to just integrate and realize and, and start to learn what love was again and integrate back into society and um yeah. at the same time it really does sound like a rebirth right <laughs> oh yeah I, I i joke and say i'm a rebirthaholic because i feel like <laughs> i've been doing this so many times <laughs> that's so, funny yeah it's 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 interesting because um i just i just kept going and um one of the things that really helped me was just being transparent in the moment at all times which was a challenge until recently, um, but just doing that over and over again, 
it it clears the assumptions you have, the distortions, the blocks, and you just keep working through it until you're more and more aligned with who you are and with other people. Right, right. right. All right. Well, now seems like a good moment to take a quick minute to tell those of you who aren't familiar a bit about our sponsor, Gaia. I've been a big fan of Gaia for many years now, which is why they're the only content provider I've ever reached out to in regards to potentially supporting the Positive Head podcast. So needless to say, I'm very excited they're now supporting the show. Gaia truly is my personal go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web. They have an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. Just to give you an example, on May 1st on the show Wisdom Teachings, host David Wilcock explores the scientific proof of ascension, DNA activation, and how interplanetary climate change is made possible with nested spheres of energy emanating from the galaxy. I mean, it'd be pretty hard to be more up my alley, right? Uh, As you guys all constantly hear me say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to go deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place I know of to do it, period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. From here, is this really when you started to focus on your your healing work? I never thought I would I would do this for other people. Um, but I just was seeing, you know, people around me and I could see their energy field. And sometimes I would just take my hand and pull stuff out of them and they would you know, freak out and then feel a lot better. And, you know, I, I was just exploring and I didn't have too much, um, outside training. It was more just something I, I just always had that woke up the more and more I opened up my mind and my heart. And so yeah. it, it shifted from just helping my friends and family to, you know, just realizing I, a lot, a lot of it was, you know, just seeing other people doing it and, not really, you know, like Reiki is great. And I studied that a few years ago, but you know, for Mm -hmm. 45 minutes, a lot of people, you know, some people are amazing at it, but a lot of people are just putting their hands there. They're not really using their intuition. They're not really interacting with the, the other person. And it's, you know, you can feel a tingle, you can feel a little lighter, but is that really going to get to the root issue and power the other person, teach them what they need to know and, you know, get them on their way. So I, 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 I started just experimenting and playing and and really just going deep and just starting to trust my intuition and at first I was scared it's like what if I what if they don't have a sister called Claire but I right. I'm hearing that so I have to say it and it the more I just trusted my intuition the more it came through and was able wow. to help people deeper and at first I was you know I didn't really have too much training so sometimes you know I talked to an old friend from college and I called him up and was like you have AIDS and blah, 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 blah. And it freaked him out and actually didn't Whoa. help him because he knew that, but that's not empowering. So then I learned, right. okay, you know, it's one thing to just, you know, say what you see, but what about saying it in the right way at the right time with the right energy yeah. only to empower the other person? So right. it, was, it was a lot of mistakes I made. And unfortunately, you know, a couple people got pretty hurt from my actions or words when I was starting out. I had good intentions, but it's yeah. not just intention. It's the method and you being grounded. And I wasn't grounded at all. You know, I'm just yeah. getting in my body recently now. So, um, it was, a, it was a lot of, uh, slaps in the faces and, uh, learning curves. And, uh, but I'm happy that I, I'm at a place now where without needing to give people, medicine or anything i yeah what i what i do is i i I essentially tap into their subconscious mind right away and into their heart and i'm helping to recode and rewire and create a field where they can access the shamanic journey space and they can see different parts of themselves and empower them to do it on their own and i'm within a few minutes walking them through these deep parts of themselves and by them they're, they're doing it themselves. They're walking through the door and I'm just showing them which door to go through. And so Why, right. they get the tools to be able to do that themselves. Wow. 
What a fascinating Perhaps. journey for you. I mean, so just to kind of elaborate on the process, for example, you know, I remember hanging out with you, um, I forget it, what event, what festival we were at and, and spending some time together and talking about, you know, um, in, in this instance, I think we were talking about my child's mother and there being some uh, issues there and you instantly were like, well, let me see. And you like tap in on the spot and you, so you can essentially tap in like to me right now, for example, if you were consciously trying to do that and give, get a read of what's going on with me, where, you know, what, where there's blockages, the whole, essentially look out of someone's eyes, like you were saying, right? Exactly. And, and it happens instantly and you can do this at home by just, I mean, it's more of like, instead of how to do it, it's more mm-hmm. of like, what, what are the blocks that are preventing you from doing it? Cause I remember yeah. the, the, the African shaman, um, during my first journey, he was, he told me go to, there was another woman sitting next to me and he was like, go in her body and find out what's going wrong. And I said, how do you do that? And he said, don't ask how, just do it. Like that was his response. Like, and I love that because as soon as he said that I was, I was in it because I stopped trying to use my mind to conceptualize it and you just fucking do it. Right. Yeah. And so that's really how you do anything. And so at home you can try this by just first feeling safe and realize you're not going to pick up anyone's energy unless you are afraid of doing that and you don't believe in yourself. So I'm not scared of that. And so instantly you can just, the easiest way for me is I just choose to experience everything they're experiencing. So instantly, you know, I'm feeling, you know, a block in my head or, you know, some, some warm energy there and like something around my throat that's not letting me speak my truth fully. And then I'm clearing it in myself Right. And guiding them out of it, like breathe here, wait, you're 80%, a little more, feel right there. You know, there's parts in our bodies where if you're not really feeling it, which is simply you're merging your soul, your consciousness with that part of your body, then it's not able to fully heal. So I'm literally, right. you know, I can tell how much they're doing it, where they're doing it. And it's really easy. It's, it's, it's actually pretty effortless right now. And I'm, wow. I'm saying that just to empower everyone to realize they can do this too. And, um, sometimes we might make mistakes and that's just our mind getting in the way and then wanting to, you know, give advice or lecture someone, which usually is what we're just saying it to ourselves. Like if we, if something comes up for the client that you're working on or a friend and you're judging it, it's because you have it yourself and you're in denial of it. So you're projecting it out. (laughs) So it's good to play the reflection game whenever you're, uh, you know, playing with someone and uh, right. any anything that you're angry about or that you even have a small judgment about, it's in some way still inside of you. And it's a perfect uh, way for you to realize that it's it's in you so you, you can heal it. So I see it all as a gift. Yeah. Very fascinating. Yeah, I remember the first time we met, actually, um, you came to, to my house with uh, a a group of uh, mutual friends and uh, yeah. you know within a few minutes you were like you know doing healing work on people and they're having these incredible reactions and then even my partner at the time you know right. you did some work with her and she had a really emotional powerful release <laughs> and yeah, visions yeah. of you know pat, past life related incidents and it was it was wild you know I was uh, <laughs> I was like who is <laughs> this guy <laughs> it was so <laughs> cool though and you know you actually brought some something up that I've been meaning to ask you ever since and I forget when I see you that I thought was really interesting. So going back to that night, and I don't know if you remember it or not. Um, there was, it was like a little get together. Well, I know you remember the night, but this particular instance, so it was a little get together and, uh, me being forever playful was, uh, suggesting, uh, partaking with some, in some psychedelics. And, uh, you, I remember at the time you sort of like consulted your guides and you're like, yeah, no, not for me, you know? And, um, I I thought that process was really interesting. And then we got talking about it a little bit. And my partner at the time, uh, she, she wasn't really interested either. And you, and you made a comment and you were like, well, yeah, that makes total sense because you're Arcturian and she's Pleiadian. So Arcturians always want to have their hand in the cookie jar Uh, at the time. And I was was like, okay, my friend friend was telling me, uh, you know, Arcturians, you know, and for those who don't understand what we're talking about, uh, you know, many you know, some some people believe in, in in our community that we have a a root race that we're from, and right, right, uh, right. I'm saying Arcturians 
which is one of the species they they love wearing bright colors and going to parties and doing a lot of medicines and psychedelics and so um, but I, I was actually just totally joking about that i, I don't really ah. uh, put in too much power in all that and i feel like we're all we all have a lot of different archetypes and it, it can also be a story and you know and it's it's really yep. just soul and who you are um right but, right right um, yeah and that's exactly yeah. what i was gonna ask i wasn't sure if it was a joke or if in your case you were seen you know because i know I, I don't i don't have the insight but i do believe that we're you know obviously we have you know past lives future lives on one hand and on another hand i suppose they're all happening simultaneously right um but so we're connected to you know and of course i i'm personally a firm believer that there's all sorts of uh, extraterrestrial mm-hmm. activity, you know, in and around this planet. And of course, you know, you have oh, a yeah. lot of people who, who, who connect with uh, these beings and, or claim to connect with these beings. So, um, yeah, that was something that I, I just thought was really funny. And I'm like, okay, well, was that a joke or was that something that you really felt, you know, sincerely? So that was, uh, <laughs> that's funny. True. We'll never know. <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> never know. Maybe we'll find out one day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so so yeah i mean this all of this i mean there's so many different ways i could go with this and continue to i could probably pick your brain for hours because it's all so fascinating so what kind of tools for people for them to break through their own blockages what what sort of um advice would you give i mean of course we talked a little bit about the borax bath and the pineal cleanse is there any other sort of uh, especially for people who are sort of a, at a 101 level, you know, they're just going down this road. Uh, they're not really prepared to go take iboga um, in the jungle. Um, so what, what, what would be some recommendations that you'd have? Yeah. Um, whether you're one or 101 or you've done a lot of spiritual work, I like coming back to the simplicity and one of the, uh, realizations that's important to have is that we have sub personalities. And so Mm -hmm. a lot of people, most people are playing one or more different roles and they don't even know it because they're switching personalities and they always think that's the one that who they are. So if someone yells at you, you can become a victim, for example, and then you could either, you know, close off your heart and, you know, feel bad and then act out and have an eating disorder, or you can be the savior and just want to save everyone but that's still a wounded child archetype that's not at a at a higher level beyond you know the duality of uh, victim abuser and savior so a really good thing is to be aware of if you're playing a role if you're in a sub personality and the best way to merge them all so that um, you can really regain your sovereignty and the control over your consciousness is not to try to release like most people try. It's like, how do I release this? How do I get rid of it? That's the whole issue. There's exiles, which means parts of your consciousness that are their own personalities that have been exiled from you and they want to reconnect. So for example, tuning in, you can do this right now, closing your eyes and breathing and tuning into your inner child. And just see a picture of a young little boy or girl in front of you and ask them what they're protecting you from. Maybe they're protecting you from being seen, being visible. Because when you were a kid, you got attacked if you had too much attention or if you spoke your truth, you got made fun of or you got punished by your parents. So whatever it is, you have to tell them first, forgive them because they're actually just we're trying to protect you and realize there's nothing to forgive. And then above the level of forgiveness is gratitude. Thank them for protecting you. It's like you had this little soldier your whole life protecting you, even though you might think it didn't help you, it taught you a big lesson. And then feeling that gratitude, explain to that little boy or girl that the war is over, meaning you're not at war anymore. You're not with your parents or whatever environment you were in that was unconscious to you. You get to choose now with discernment who you're hanging out with. And so you're safe now to release that medieval armor and Hmm. flip the, flip the tortilla on the fear. If they're being resistant (laughs) and say, it's actually, you know, you can ask them, do you want to keep me safe? And they'll say, yes. 
and then show them, well, by not allowing me to speak my, my truth, I am not living my purpose. I am broke right now and I'm scared to share my boundaries. I'm unhealthy. My relationships are unhealthy. And so the only way for you to protect me is actually to make sure I always speak my truth. So you just flip it on them. And then that's mm. the fastest and most powerful way I've found to, I mean, a lot of times this happens in just a few minutes with people and they literally release that protection, which is a block right. or a limit in, you know, in their throat, in their body or somewhere in their psyche. And then you just really reconnect with that inner child and reassign them the role of protecting you in a way that is aligned with you and your higher self. And then just really, you regain a huge part of your energy you regain a huge part of your personal power. So just to remind everyone that your body, you know, we're living in a holograph. So your body is just a subconscious representation of yourself. And most of our body is actually living in the past. Whatever trauma happens that we don't consciously heal becomes our destiny. And right. it lives out in us until we look at those echoes of the past that are an alarm system saying, oh, don't play big. Don't, don't do this. You're going to get hurt again. So our body's actually living in the past, which sounds crazy, but it's true. And only mm. through being aware of it and speaking to it again, do we come back to the present where we have all of our power. Very, very fascinating. Um, and of course, you know, one of the topics you hear a lot about is, embracing this seems to kind of go right along with embracing the shadow right and it's something that i think a lot of people are resisting is this this sort of darker part of ourself that that we all have and of course i would say the darkness in the world is a reflection of a part of each of us right um what are your what are your thoughts on you know that whole process and and people sort of you know you get so many people who it's just like only think positive thoughts only focus on these things and of course that's that's the end goal but when something negative comes up resisting it can be a big big problem and running from it uh would you agree with that that's a great point. And I, I went through it and um, it's it's a path a lot of people in the new age community take is right. uh, becoming quote unquote love and light, but they're suppressing their shadow. And right. through that, it creates uh, more distortions. So what you need to do is realize first, just to demystify the shadow, the shadow isn't evil. And uh, because Good and evil are fourth dimensional subjective terms. And we're moving into the 5D and above consciousness where there's no polarity. So just to simplify right. what that means, the shadow is simply the parts of you that you are not aware of and are in denial about. So for example, right. you might be attracted to someone. I mean, let's make it kind of out there. Like, Maybe you're a pedophile, for example, but because maybe you're attracted, you've, you've had an attraction to little kids and it's so socially unacceptable that you close it off because your identity is like, I'm a good person. So whatever right. your identity is, your ego, if it, whatever doesn't match with that definition gets put in that black box where you don't even know it's there. So you literally cut right. it off. But then that's where, how people become pedophiles and they abuse little kids, for example. And if you looked at it, maybe it's just like, oh, wow, I've, it's actually like I never got to live my childhood. And this just this thought came to me because I'm, I've been suppressing my own inner child. And then once you look at it, you're not attracted to children sexually. And it's just something, a distortion that you had to look at. So right. the easiest way to really look at your shadow the easiest way for me is that you see the shadow in other people and they're blind to it. Right. And yeah. we're, we tend to judge people's shadows and anytime hundred percent, this is, this is not sometimes this is a hundred percent of the time we roll just to make it very simple. Anytime you are judging or you get triggered by someone else's shadow, then it's in you. Yeah. It doesn't mean you have the exact same issue. Um, it just me, it could, it could be in an opposite polarity. Like someone yeah. might get triggered that you, you look at someone and like, Oh my God, they're being such a victim. You're such a victim. And they, it just triggers them. Right. It's like, you're so weak and they have 
the victim mentality to them, but they're expressing it in an opposite polarity where they're trying to save the whole world and they're looking at everyone else like victims. And so they need to save them, but it's, it's right. the same frequency. So by playing the reflection game, it's the fastest way to, to look and do the math to see, you know, go back inside at your own shadows. Like how did I manifest this person and this situation? What's in it in me that created this? Because we're all, creating every every person we meet you know we're all manifesting it and so looking at the subconscious parts of us in that way is, is really huge and for me doing so many sessions it's um on on other people every single one of them i learn lessons from every single one of them reflects something in me so it's it's really awakening and healing myself every time and so i see it you know always as an equal playing field where what you what you're teaching is what you need to know the most. So it's really right. powerful. Teach best what we most need to learn, right? Oh yeah. I always say that. And it, you know, also to your statement a moment moment ago, you know, you attract what you judge until you no longer judge what you attract. I saw that that quote recently and I was like, "Wow, that is that is so that is powerful." Huge. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it really is. It's just, you know, it is, it is truly all mirrors here. And when you get to a certain point, it's like, I can only go so far down a road of judging or pointing a finger at someone else till it's like you start training yourself. It starts very quickly. You start catching yourself. You know, I can look back years ago, decade ago, and it was like, I was so judgmental and I still have those moments. But when they come up, it's like, oh, you know, you, I've just worked on it so much. You start to train yourself where you can't, you can't get away with your own, you know, BS for very long. Once you really make this a part of your, your sort of, you know, curriculum, self-growth curriculum, right? That's a, that's a great point. And I think the reason why is because life is a school and love is the lesson. So we're here and all of our reflections are here to show us what's really inside. And so whether it's judgment or for example, fear, Let's say we have a fear of something happening. We're creating a protection, a shield in our energy field, but that shield is actually manifesting the fear to come to give it a reason to be there. So you're creating yeah. a duality. When you create something in the fourth dimension, which is the realm of thought, the astral realms, you're creating a protection, then you're also creating the fear. And right, interesting. When we're moving to 5D, we realize we don't need protection because we're manifesting everything. So if you don't want yeah. something, just... Don't be in that reality. Give it no energy. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah, that's that's a very, very powerful point um, uh, that you've made there. You know, hey, if you're, you're focused on protecting, then you now have to have the the sort of the, the balance of that, right? You have to have something to be protected from. So, um, yeah, a lot of a lot of people that are waking up in the spiritual community, are always asking like, how do you protect yourself or how do you not pick up energy? And, you know, and I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm, I still have lessons to learn and I'm, I'm not perfect, but what really switched the flip for me from attracting a lot of uh, bad energies and, and things like that was moving from the fourth 40 perspective of, you know, creating a protection to just knowing that you follow your intuition, you're on the right path that you're not going to attract things unless it's for your highest good. So just literally, it's just releasing the fear. You know, yeah. that's what's going to protect you is you just right. realizing the fear isn't real and facing it, not being afraid right. and continually double wrapping a condom of white light around you and then going into the fear, you know, right. which is just right. playing with yourself, like running after your own tail. So, right. uh, yeah. Very, very powerful and insightful. So one of the questions that I always, always ask, uh, we love stories of synchronicity or serendipity on the show. And uh, I got to imagine, Daniel, that you have something uh, that comes to mind, probably more than one story up your sleeve. Oh my God, I have so many good stories. Of up your wizard sleeve. <laughs> That's a big <laughs> sleeve. <laughs> oh man. Well, I'll share a brief one about... Um, Actually, where you where you heard me talk, a lightning in a bottle is a is a big festival. Around thirty thousand people go. I highly recommend going. A transformational, yes. very beautiful festival. And yeah, uh, I did an interview a while back, guys. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, uh, with Dee Dee Fleming, one of the founders. If you go back through the archives, you can you can check that out. 
Yes. And uh, I went three years ago for the first time. And this was right when I was starting to open my heart. I didn't even know what love mm. was anymore. And um, I I was listening to Tycho, this band play with two of my first I love Tycho. You know, real friends. And I didn't even know they were my friends at the time. And I finally like looked at them and were like, thought like, wow, I think these guys are my friends. Like I did, it was hard for me to even accept that people liked me because they were just so loving and nice the whole time. And I, I just had this beautiful experience where like, you know, thousands of people were just dancing together, so happy. And I just broke down crying because I was looking, I was walking down the streets of, of the world and everyone seemed so depressed, like zombies. And, and for the first time, there's just so many people that were actually really happy together. Um, right. You know, it's different than people at bars that are drunk. I don't think they're happy there. But Right, were, right. It's sort of a happy. false sense of happiness. Exactly. So... I just broke down crying and I, I felt so much love and gratitude start pouring through me. And I just put my hands on the ground and I said, you know, inside I said, you know, whoever enlightened beings created this festival, you must be from a different planet, but thank you so much. I, I feel hmm. so much gratitude. I, I just, all I want to do is just share my gift with you one day to help you because this has been so healing for me. And then right. I just forgot about that. And then, um, about a year later, um, or half a year later, I got a call from, uh, one of the co-founders of the festival and she wanted, uh, a session for me, which completely changed her life. And it was so beautiful to connect with her. And then she, uh, really helped integrate me into the festival and, and share my magic with a lot of people. And it was just out of a movie when I, when I met her and I'm like, I literally, wanted to do this. And then she just found my number from someone else that got a session from me. Wow. It happened. And, uh, that's one of the, the many, uh, synchronicities where I got to meet specific superheroes that right. I wanted to meet and, you know, or as a kid that I put on a pedestal and now I'm giving them a session, you know? So it's, it's been really healing just to have such a difficult, challenging life and a lot, you know, thinking I'm, I'm a fuck up my whole life to the past couple of years, being able to connect with so many amazing superheroes in different industries and being of service to them and having such genuine relationships with them because it's made everything worth it. And I know that's everyone's path. We're, we're born in a chrysalis, a womb. The matrix isn't bad. We want to stop judging things as bad and realize the yeah. matrix is Latin for womb. And it's a womb that we chose, we created it so that we can break out of it and learn our lessons and, you know, share our gift with the world. It's what, it's what's created so that we can experience and transcend and emerge. So just really, um, remembering that it's, it's all a blessing and beyond forgiveness, gratitude and transmuting everything into a blessing is the fastest and only way I think to really transcend and have quantum instant healing and go into higher and higher levels of awakening. Yeah. That's super powerful point. Uh, that, yeah, you, you we, I believe it wholeheartedly. It's like you can't have the experience of overcoming anything if there's nothing to overcome. So all of the characters on the world stage, you know, these, the, the evil corporations and politicians and all these things, it's so easy to start pointing a finger at them and judging, right? As we were talking about, but when you really understand the full story, it's like they're playing their role and actually love you so much that they're willing to have, you know, dim their vibration and uh, narrow their focus, essentially uh, self-inflicted, you know, disease <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. to give you, give us people that are on this path of, you know, spreading uh, wisdom and awakening ourselves, you know, teaching and certainly students first and foremost, um, it, it gives us this opportunity to to help heal in our own unique ways, and without you know the the things to overcome, it wouldn't wouldn't be much of a journey, would it? Exactly, and it's a beautiful journey. And and just one more thing that came is you know what helped me so much is realizing I was addicted to being a victim and being in my own story. Mm. And you can if you're feeding your story of like oh it's. Like one of the things that kept was coming for the the past few years is like it's it's so hard to open my heart it keeps closing I'm scared to connect with people 
I feel disconnected. And I just created more and more of that until, you know, my things happened that just sucked until I was just like, no, fuck this, fuck this story. <laughs> And sometimes that's the spiritual thing to do instead of trying to, you know, you, you can process and go to the memory and clear it, which is what I do with people. But that's just a few minutes. We can do it really fast. And then it's like Tinder. You just swipe left. When you get the story <laughs> coming back, don't give it energy. Don't feed it more fuel. Just get yep. back into 5D, which is out of the story. Just be present yeah. and realize it's not real. Swipe left. That's the fastest yeah. way to... Just get out of it. Once you remember, once you realize it's not real, the first time, yeah. you know, you have to do a little processing just to get, you know, the bridge there to realize it's not real, and then just commit to not letting it come back by not yeah. feeding it. And it's going to test you. It's going to come back. It's like a pop up window on your browser, and you're like, no, this is spam. Goodbye, and you just yeah. come back yeah. onto your clear screen and keep yep. walking on your path because it's meant to stop you from doing it. And the action is what permanently clears the shame and the fear by exposure, which clears the imprint of it. Mm. Yeah. It's such a, such a powerful, you know, perspective, you know, where attention goes, energy flows. And if we can just stop, you know, and, and it's once again, it's there serving you that pop up. It's like saying, oh, you know, let's let's work out your muscles. Let's make sure. Are you sure that you're, uh, you know, that you're you're ready to transcend this sort of limitation? And that's why we see this this sort of cycle, uh, the spiral nature of our reality, right? Where we sort of circle back on things that we even think we've overcome for further clearing. I would say exactly that the path of awakening is a, is a spiral and. That's the shape of everything, really, in the in the universe. It's a sacred, this sacred structure, you know, the the phi symbol, which is uh, the way nature is formed, the way we're awakening. It's it's a really beautiful. Um, I, I recommend watching this YouTube video that just blew my mind. Called uh, What's that? If, if you type in uh, part two spirals, you'll get it. It's I think it's. Uh, inner worlds, outer worlds, and it just—it's just a documentary about spirals. But it puts in the atom, the universe, nature, um, ancient magical traditions, and just puts into perspective how powerful and beautiful the spiral is, and how it's the equation of life. Wow, I will definitely check that out. Yeah. Well, Daniel, this has been absolutely fascinating. Uh, everything that I'd hoped. <laughs> oh, no hope, right? We don't hope. I knew. <laughs> and everything that I knew it would be uh, absolutely uh, magical. You truly are a wizard. And thank you for coming uh, on the show and sharing some of your wizardy wisdom. And for those of you interested in connecting with Daniel, check out his site, danielraphael.org. That's uh, D-A-N-I-E-L-R-A-P-H-A-E-L dot org. You can actually request a free awakening call from Daniel there. I do have one last question for you. I always uh, open with the same question and close with the same question. 60 seconds or less, what is the meaning of life according to Daniel Raphael? Uh-huh. The meaning of life is what you make it because meaning is a filter of reality. So there's no objective meaning of life except the one we give it. They actually did a study mm -hmm. and realized there's different filters of reality like meaning, giving meaning, giving labels to things, and belief systems, which is the strongest belief, uh, the strongest mm -hmm. filter. And so instead of grasping for meaning, just remember that life is a school and love is the lesson and follow your heart. And you go above meaning into a higher perspective where you you just know, like you said, right? Yeah. It's 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 a deeper knowing that you tap into more and more as you follow your highest excitement. You follow the breadcrumbs of your passion and you get deeper and deeper tapped into you, which is the universe. Beautiful. So well said. Daniel, thank you, my friend. I look forward to uh, seeing you soon and to connecting again. I'm sure we'll, we'll do this again at some point when the time is right. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Lots of love to you and everyone listening. Aloha. 
Well, everyone, that concludes this week's interview episode. If you have enjoyed this positive download from our hearts and minds to yours, please take a minute, give us a rating or review on iTunes, since iTunes is the holy grail of all things podcasting. Uh, Your good reviews help us to reach more listeners. Also, we would be extremely appreciative if you would tell your friends and family about the show. Our sincere intent with the Positive Head podcast is to spread positivity to the world because, well, because we're selfish, quite honestly. Uh, I say that jokingly, but really only halfway joking. I'm referring to the good kind of selfish based on the knowing that we all get what we give in this life because when we give, we're actually always giving to extensions of self since we're all really one in the same consciousness, just in different bodies. So if you want to be a good selfish along with us by helping to spread the positivity, by all means, please proceed to shout about the Positive Head podcast from your rooftop. (laughs) Otherwise, As you continue on your fabulous journey in this 3D reality, be sure to remember this. As long as you ain't dead, you're already positive ahead. Journey well, everyone, and thank you for being.